Are you ready to be inspired, equipped, challenged, but encouraged to move from where you are in life right now to that place you know you are destined to be? Join me, Robin May, in the Intentional Living Living Room. Hello, I'm Robin May, and welcome back to Intentional Living with Life Coach Robin May. Sisters, we are on a roll. I hope by now you're getting a feel for the flow of our time together each week. Now, if you are new to the Intentional Living Living Room, no worries. You can jump right in today to gain some valuable nuggets to enhance your life. Now, every show is super exciting to me, but I must be honest, a part of this show is going to stretch me a bit. But if I want to encourage you to not make any excuses, then I have to hold myself to the same standard. So let me tell you what we're going to discuss today. Today's show is all about living well. Yes, we are going to talk about our health, ladies. First, we have on the show Dr. Julianne Burt. She is one of Atlanta's top OBGYNs, and she is going to give us some insight into what we deal with as women when it comes to our hormones and our libido. Yes, we are grown and we're going to go there. Then, and this is the part that's going to stretch me. One of my favorite trainers, Sheila Hunter, is here, and she is going to take me through some real exercises. Yes, I'm actually going to work out. Wow. And these will be exercises that you can do from the comfort of your home. And I hope she'll let me tell you her age because she is so fly, it's going to blow you away. And then lastly, I have a special guest that's going to give us some practical tips to help our overall health. I'll share more about that later. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now make sure you are following all of our social media pages where we continue the conversation behind the show. And don't forget to invite your family and friends to join us on this journey. Y'all, it's better when you do it with girlfriends. Let's go. I am so excited about our very first guest today in the living room. She is my sorority sister and she is my friend. Her name is Dr. Julianne Burt and she is the founder of Radiant Women's Health. I think you are going to enjoy this conversation. Hey, Dr. Ju. Hey there. That's what we call you. Dr. Julianne, we call you Dr. Ju. Okay, so we have so much to dive into, but where I want us to start, Mm -hmm. tell everyone, because we all talk about this, how did you figure out your passion and your niche? How did you even figure it out? Okay, well, I knew when I was in the 11th grade I wanted to be a doctor. Okay. And so having the opportunity at, in medical school to deal with women, deal with men, deal with children, that's when I realized that I like to talk to women. Uh, yeah. So I, I decided upon OBGYN. Mm-hmm. But since I've been practicing for nearly 14 years, I have definitely... Um, I've definitely learned Mm -hmm. where and what area where I am most impactful. And so my niche is dealing with all things women's health, Mm -hmm. but more specifically, helping women in their areas of sexuality Yes, and helping them if they're having a problem. 43% of women have some kind of complaint um, during their lifetimes when Mm -hmm. it comes to their sexuality, yeah. and their ability to connect with their partners. Yes. And Robin, I tell this story, I'll tell it briefly, that when I first started practicing, mm-hmm. I had this one particular person, a patient of my beautiful lady, beautiful sister. She was a wife and she was a mother. And every time I would see her, she would come back with this statement, Dr. Jew, I don't want to have sex with my husband. Mm-hmm. And back then, Robin, I'm not... I wasn't where I am now. Yeah. And I would tell her, well, you need to relax. You need to get a babysitter. Light some candles. Light some candles, Uh (laughs) nice bath, and then everything would work out. And I'll cut to the chase. About two years after I left that practice and started my own, I saw her at Walmart. And I said, hey, how are things going? How are the kids? How's the husband? And when I learned that she was divorced, Mm. I really felt at that moment Mm -hmm. that as her physician, as her gynecologist, I had failed her. And... She had a real condition that a lot of us as physicians are not aware of. So 
that's where my journey started because yeah. I did not want to fail another patient. I love that. And I cannot wait to get into that conversation. The sisters in the living room are like, tell me more about that. But before <laughs> we get there, I want you to tell me really quickly, when we talk about a woman's health, that could be so many different things. But I want you to look at specific age ranges. Okay. So if I'm talking to or if you're talking to a woman in her 30s, when it comes to her hormones, what should she be expecting in her 30s? In her 30s, she should still be having normal regular menstrual cycles. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of women experience premenstrual symptoms and mm -hmm. that's not unusual. But the thing that I like to, my message to yes. the women in their 30s is more about those hormones are going to start declining. Oh Lord, in your 30s? In your, in your 30s. So I, I especially speak to the women who have not yet had their children. Um, because everybody is, you know, on this trip that 40 is the new 30. And I tell people, that's not what your ovaries are that's saying. Not, okay, I love it. Y'all, that already is a takeaway. If you're in your 30s, <laughs> that is something important for you to pay attention to. Okay, what about women in her 40s? In your 40s, that is when you may start experiencing brain fog. Yes, Lord. That's when fatigue can begin to set yes. in. About 10 years before a woman goes through the change, her hormones start to decline, especially testosterone. Yes. So we think of testosterone when we think of men, mm -hmm. but women have testosterone as well. But after the late 30s and into the 40s, it halves. What does that mean? Wow. Let me give you a brief example. In your 20s, if I called you up, I... Friday. It's yeah. Friday. It's 5 p.m. Girl, I heard there's a band downtown. Do you want to go? Girl, I just got off work. Come pick me up. Yes, but what happens in your 40s? But in your 40s, ooh, are they going to be there next week too? <laughs> I know. That. Yes, mm, absolutely. I wish you had warned me. Girl, I'm tired. I absolutely. So wait a minute. That has helped me. I hit the chair because that <laughs> has helped me because we're going to talk offline because these hot flashes that I'm already having oh, are well. scaring me. Okay, talk to the woman in her 50s. So, Women in our 50s, more of what I just explained, mm -hmm. because women go through what we consider the menopausal transition or premenopause, oh, yeah. right? And that hits women at different stages. Yeah. But in your 50s, the average woman is going to go through menopause by 51, 52. So the periods are going to many times can get a little haywire. Yeah. But emotionally, I have many patients that this is not me. I'm usually not that emotional. Yes. I was crying and it was a, a toilet tissue commercial. I don't understand what's yes. going on. Yes. And a lot of women are come to me and I say, help me. I'm about to get fired from my job. Because I'm popping off. I'm popping off. Yeah, Dr. Jew, when I tell you, you are blessing the ladies. Okay. <laughs> so let's go ahead because they are like, Robin, all of this is great. Uh -huh. Talk to me about that libido. So uh -huh. you and I have actually went on a pseudo tour mm -hmm. talking about a woman's interest intimacy with her partner right. when it comes to what happens to her emotionally. I came from that standpoint, but mm -hmm. you shared from what's happening to women physically. Yes. And I think we're about to set some sisters free. free. So talk to me a little yes. bit about what you have discovered because so many women are suffering in silence. So I'm going to let you just go with the okay. flow. Tell me about yeah. what's happening to a woman and her sex drive. Okay. So first of all, our sex drive is not like men. Right. It's not. High five my sisters. It, it's not. And, and I say that because most folks who even take a psychology class, they may learn of the Masters and Johnson model when it comes to sexuality. Mm -hmm. It starts with the desire to have sex. Yes. Then once you start revving up that engine, the arousal starts to, to, to take play, right? And so that's when for a woman, it's not only in her mind, she's thinking about it, maybe fantasizing about it, but she actually will get a little bit, if I could say, she Ex could get a little she excited. Will respond. <laughs> yes. She could get a get a little excited, right? And then perhaps climax. And remember the difference between men and women, women do not need a climax to call their intimate moment with their partner satisfying. Stop, say that again. A woman does not need a climax to call it satisfying. To call it satisfying. And when you ask women in many research models, you will find that women, intimacy may be more important. Yes. So there have been several different models that have been described. And most women will associate themselves with that. Here's the point. Your libido can be 
either manipulated for good or bad. Yes. If I wake up on a Thursday, my husband knows, if I wake up on a Thursday and I go out of my driveway and I see everybody else's trash can out on the driveway. Absolutely. <laughs> and ours is not out there. Yes. We're going to have some problems. We're going to have some problems. Don't tap me on the shoulder when you get home. <laughs> and then you want to tap yes. me on the shoulder. Yes. Men and women are different because the woman is thinking about that trash can all day long. All day long, yes. And men are not built that way. So for women, when it comes to libido, there is such a thing as low sex drive. There's also yes. hyperactive sex drive. But many women suffer. One out of 10 women deal with hypoactive sexual desire. And for men, the number one problem that a man has sexually is arousal. We affectionately call it ED. Mm -hmm. You know what happened? 1998. 1998, the FDA approved the little purple pill, right? Yes. The, the Viagra. Yeah. And all their cousins came out. So what science did was gave a fix to men while the women were just fine holding hands and playing, <laughs> yes. you know, Pequino and bingo. Yes. And they woke the man up and the woman was like, Lord, but you ain't gave nothing, nothing to me. So is there something for the woman? There is. There's yes. many options. There are pills. 2015, the FDA approved a pill if I may say, it's, it, we call it the little pink pill. Yeah. And Addie um, was not only approved, but it was made available. But you know what? Unfortunately, the little purple pill and the, and, and the blue pill, keep calling it purple. The blue pill is helping a lot of men. They're getting it off of online. They're getting it from uh, their friends. Yeah. They're taking it out of their stash. And women are afraid to talk to their doctors. So what I encourage women to do is go seek help. Go tell your doctor the next time you're getting your pap smear. It may be the next time you're seeing, I don't care if you're going for a blood pressure check, just say to your doctor, there may be an issue. I've realized that my desire has changed. I realize that my ability to climax is different. Yeah. Sometimes that is physical. If you've had vaginal deliveries, it is different than down there yeah. and there is there are ways to help women I believe every woman has a platform regardless of where that platform is so if you were standing in an auditorium filled with women what would be the one thing you would tell them that you know for sure when it comes to a woman's health you are given one life mm -hmm. you're given one body one opportunity guard it yes guard it I could tell my teenagers that if I may use a condom Yes. I could tell my 20s and 30 year olds that, you know, yes. I know where we live and I know that it may be a dif difficult for you to find that person. But don't share your body with everybody. Yes. You yes. are special. Mm -hmm. And for the older ladies, I would tell you, you have the responsibility for your happiness and you have the responsibility for your health. So if you need to go downtown and check in to the Westin to get away from the crazy, then you do that, you own that, because yes. it is no one else's responsibility to keep you healthy and to keep you whole. It's no one else's responsibility to keep you healthy and to keep you whole. Thank you so much. Thank you. It is time for my favorite part of our time together, my intentional coaching moment. It is during this time I can talk directly to you, so let's chat. I am the mother to three pretty amazing little girls, Ryan, Reagan, and Riley. They truly are my reasons why. They are my motivation in more ways than I can truly express. I became a mother 12 years ago to my oldest girl, Ryan. I often think about the first time I took a flight after giving birth to Ryan. I was on the plane traveling to Dallas to visit my family and while on the plane, the airline attendant started to go through her normal safety routine. Now, by the time I had my first child, I can't even begin to tell you how many flights I had been on, so I could almost recite the safety speech right along with the attendant. But this time, a part of the speech stood out to me. It is when the airline attendant said this familiar statement. In the unlikely case of an emergency, if something were to happen to this plane, an oxygen mask will come down. Be sure to put the oxygen mask on yourself first before you put it on anyone else, including small children. Again, I'd heard that spill time and time again, but this time it stood out to me. 
my initial thought was if something were to happen while I'm on this plane with my baby, I'm going to put the mask on her first. I want her to be okay. But in that moment, it dawned on me. If I'm passed out, there is nothing I can do for my daughter. If I'm not here, I can't help her. I realized in that moment that there is nothing noble about me letting myself go in order to care for someone else. As a matter of fact, it's a bit counterintuitive. I can't be my best self to my three girls, to my handsome husband, to my family if I'm not in my best health physically, emotionally, or otherwise. I realized in that moment that it is wise for me to care for me so that I can be the best mommy, the best wife, the best friend that I can be. And ever since that moment, 12 years ago, I've committed myself to what I call oxygen therapy, learning to put the mask on myself first so that I can be fully available to those whom I love and who love me. So I want you and I to commit to being healthy in all areas of our lives, mind, body, and spirit. So here is your coaching moment. I want you to identify three specific things that you currently do, or if this is a new concept for you, three things that you will begin to do for your very own oxygen therapy. Now, it doesn't have to be anything too over the top. Maybe oxygen therapy for you is working out. Maybe it's going to the movies all by yourself. Maybe it's meditating, praying, or reading. I simply want you to identify what refuels you on your journey. Now, once you've identified these three things, I want you to take a moment right now and pull out your calendar and identify when you will schedule at least one of those things over the course of the next week. Remember... There is nothing honorable about a lack of soul care. You will be a better you when you learn to treat you well. That's it for today's ICM, but stay tuned. I have a special treat for you that will further solidify the importance of you treating you well. My good friend, Contessa Metcalf. Many of you may know her from the hit show, Married to Medicine. She has agreed to give us a few practical tips to continue helping us be intentional about our health. Y'all, she is the best, and I think you're going to love this. Check it out. Hello, beautiful people, and Shiro Life Coach Robin May. Thanks again for having me, Dr. Contessa from Marriage Medicine, to speak to you a little bit about what I think it takes to be healthy. Number one, I feel like you should wake up with an attitude of gratitude. Speak positivity and good health and strength and be disease-free into existence. Look in the mirror and say, thank you, God, for making me strong. Thank you, God, for making me healthy. Thank you, God, for the long life that I'm going to lead. Number two, I believe food is medicine. I can't say that enough. Food is medicine. And what that means is we have to stay at the periphery of the store. Get all fresh fruits and vegetables and use those as the baseline of your diet. Occasionally eat meat. That means I believe in a plant-based diet. You can, in my opinion, be very, very healthy on a plant-based diet. All the science is leaning towards that. And if you remember that all the nutrients that we need mostly come from the things that we ingest, then you'll understand why what you choose to put into your body is essential for optimal health. The last thing I feel like you should believe in is exercise. Exercising more days than not. And this is not age dependent. This is something that you have to believe in forever. So even if you're 50, 75, 100 years old, you gotta get out of the bed in the morning with the idea that some days um, you're not gonna feel like exercising, but your heart and your body is gonna thank you for it. So thank you so much for having me. And and I am so pleased to be a part of this show. Sisters, can you tell what's about to happen? I have committed to doing some exercises right here so that you can know some routines you can do in the comfort of your home. I'm so excited to have my friend, Sheila Hunter here, who is one of my favorite trainers, and she's gonna help us get right. Sheila, welcome to the show. Thank you, Robin, I'm so happy to be here. I'm so glad you're here, although you don't play with me. Now let's go ahead and put you on the spot. Can you let our sisters know your age so that they can have some motivation, because you motivate me. Yes, I am 52 years old. 
Don't she look good? <laughs> she is such a motivation for me. Okay, before we get into these exercises, Sheila, you always tell me this, so I want you to tell our sisters, exercise is important, but our nutrition is important too. So what are two tips you would give us when it comes to what we eat? Well, Robin, the first tip I would give is you always hear, I don't like to drink water. Mm -hmm. And that is a very, very important step in the weight loss process. Okay, so we gotta get some water. You have to get some water. Okay. And I've always get the question, well, how much water should I drink? Yes. So you should drink the half of your body weight okay. in ounces of water. A day. A day. So okay. if a person weighs 120, mm -hmm. they should be drinking 60 ounces of water okay. each day. All right, so don't worry about how many ounces I need to be drinking, okay? Don't you even worry about it. Okay, <laughs> what's another tip that you can give us when it comes to nutrition? Another tip about nutrition is fiber. Okay. Fiber helps you to eliminate very easily. Mm -hmm. So if you get your fruit and vegetables in each day, yes. at least four to five servings, then you'll find yourself eliminating more often, and elimination is key to losing weight. So my cookies that I love is not the fiber I need to be eating? Oh, no, ma'am. Oh. Cookies are off, off the menu. Okay. All or at right. least about three months until you get a routine schedule down. Okay. And then you can kind of slowly add it back in maybe once a month. <sighs> All right, you've already stretched me, okay. But let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna work on three body parts, really three and a half. We're gonna work on our arms, our legs, and the legs will include our back area, and we're gonna work on our bellies, okay? Yes. And so we are ready to dive in. What is the first routine you would give us or exercise when it comes to our arms? Okay, so the first routine is we're gonna do what's called combination exercises. Okay. And combination exercises for people that can't get to the gym, yes. you wanna always try to incorporate the full body. Okay. So the first exercise we're going to do is going to be the biceps which is the front of the arms yes and your shoulders area so okay. you're going to start here with hands down and you're going to come up here and then you're going to press up right here and you can do this eight to ten reps for three sets this movement here will get the heart rate to pumping and once that heart rate is pumping oxygen will begin to flow throughout the body and to the muscles and we have what's inside of our body called endorphins. Okay. Endorphins or happy pills, which is released to get that energy going. So that can help us with our moods, right? Yes. All right, so that's one exercise. That's is there one. another exercise with our arms? Yes. Okay. Another one, you want to work on the triceps, which is okay. the back of the arm. So you stand with your feet together, mm -hmm. and you come here, and you just kick back right here. Make sure you take those arms up high enough so that you can feel that muscle I'm already feeling on that it. back arm. Uh, I'm feeling it already, Sheila. Okay, great. I'm feeling it. Okay. And you could do eight to ten sets of reps of these for three sets also. Yes. Okay. So we got those two. I think I'm already breathing hard, Sheila. I think okay. I'm already breathing hard. Okay, so what are we going to do with our legs? Okay, for our legs, we're going to come here in a stance right here. Yes. Feet out at an angle. Drop down here. This is going to work the front of the legs yes. and the glutes and the side oh, at the same Lord. time. So you're okay. here, you can place your hands here, you can place your hands here. So what you want to do. I'm going to do this because I'm praying. Okay, you could, you're going to yes. come up on the right leg, mm -hmm. come here, right toe, twist it. Okay. Come down, other side, twist it, come down. Keep All that right. posture, keep your back straight because you don't want to bend over to cause strain on the back. You want to stay focused on that lower half of the body. All right, we only have a few more minutes, Sheila. Tell okay. me another routine for our so legs. So our last routine for the legs is you're gonna stand in position here, and all you're gonna do is step out. Yes. Drop down. Oh, okay. Bring mm -hmm. it back up. Then you switch to the other leg. Step I'm gonna keep out, praying with mine. Drop down, bring it up. Okay. And you can do this same routine for three sets of eight to 10 reps. Right in the comforts of our home. In okay. the comfort of your home. Let's deal with this belly area. Tell okay. me what we're going to do about the belly. So the belly we're going to work on is called planks. Okay. A lot of times people have problems with the back, so getting on their back doing uh, ab crunches can strain the neck, strain the back. So we're going to go to the floor. Now I do these with my girls at home. You're going to come on your elbows. Okay. Out. So the first thing you're going to do is lift the butt up. Here, and drop down. Here, drop down. Same thing, eight to 10 reps for three sets. Okay. And then, once you complete that, you stay here in your plank. Mm -hmm. 
You're gonna step out with the right leg here, step it over, bring Ooh. it in, left side, bring it in. All right, okay. I, I'm already tired. I really enjoyed you being on the show. What would be your platform moment? If you could talk to women about exercise, what is it that you would tell them? I would say, as Dr. Burt said in the last session, that your health is your number one priority. Yes. And you have to take care of yourself. I always tell my clients, guard your health as if your life depended on it, because it does. Because it does. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, ladies. I hope that helps. I got through those exercises. Remember at the top of the show, I said that this episode would be a stretch for me? Well, it's because if I'm honest, exercising is just not my favorite pastime, but I realize that physical movement is a critical piece to my overall health. The truth about healthy living is that we must pay attention to all aspects of our health. So with that said, I want you to give yourself a quick assessment. How would you rate your physical health? How well do you take care of your body? Do you regularly go to the doctor? Do you eat well? Do you exercise often? What about your spiritual health? How intentional are you about connecting to God and trusting his guidance over your life? Finally, how would you rate your emotional health? How often do you pay attention to your emotional IQ? I don't want those to be rhetorical questions. I want you to do an honest assessment as to how you are doing in those three areas. Now, if you wanna take this assessment to another level, ask someone that you highly trust and respect for their opinion on how you are doing on each of those areas. Sometimes an honest but gentle outside opinion can help us see the truth we may not see. And lastly, I'm sure there are some things you may want to implement in your overall health. Allow me to give you this one last tip. Make sure that whatever you implement is sustainable. Be careful about overreaching or overestimating your time and resources. Make sure that you will be able to sustain any adjustments you make over time. Well, that's it for this episode of Living Intentional with Life Coach Robin May. Until next time, remember, if you aren't living with intention, you are living passively. And when you live passively, life is happening to you. You aren't making life happen, and you are way too fly for that. I'll see you soon.